I'm here today to talk about the truth about multiple streams of income for service pattern designers and illustrators. We have a lot to talk about. True or false, you need multiple streams of income to make a living as an artist. Well, we hear this advice all the time. You need multiple streams of income. You need multiple streams of income. I've already addressed this in past videos, how we see, um, we see artists uh, pie charts at the end of the year with all the different streams of incomes they have. We hear webinars and, and podcasts and all the advice, all the blog advice about, you know, all the possibilities of the things that we could do with our art to make money. And hey, I'm not going to lie. I make, I have multiple streams of income. As you can see, freelance, um, freelance design, licensing design, art on demand, courses, affiliates. This was my income last year and I have multiple streams. It can definitely be overwhelming. <laughs> so let's break it down and let me give you some big sister advice. First, let's talk about some of the possibilities. All right. We have print on demand sites. So print on demand sites would be where you upload your artwork onto a site like Spoonflower, Redbubble, Society6. And then they, when someone orders, they, Spoonflower, Redbubble, or whoever, prints your artwork on their products and sends it off to the customer. And you get a cut of that purchase. There are stock art sites, which would be something like Shutterstock or Dreams Time. And that's where you upload your art and a, a customer can purchase it or, or license it or use it. Um, and they purchase it as a digital file, right? So they get a download of your artwork to use, your illustration, your pattern to use, and they can use it for their purposes. Stock pattern sites. This is a little bit different than stock art sites because... Um, I would say Pattern Bank is the, the one that I hear about the most, but I know there are others. Um, but a stock pattern site is somewhere where it's only about patterns. It's specifically for, you know, repeating textile design is what it's usually for. And usually up, I feel like apparel might be using these, these sites more often. And so you're only uploading your patterns and they're being bought by industry, um, either bought outright or licensed um, by people in the industry who are manufacturing repeating goods. You could work with a print studio. A print studio is someplace that is sort of the uh, analog version of a pattern site. They have lots and lots of artists either who work in-house or who work freelance for them, creating patterns, creating designs, creating illustrations. They print them out and they go to their large client list um, of stationery companies, uh, home decor companies, um, apparel companies. They bring huge stacks of paper. I know some of this is done digitally now, but back when I was working in-house, it was always a huge stack of files and paper. And they would go through and you ch would choose what one works for your product, purchase it outright, and then use that in your, your products. You can sell your prints directly to companies. So you don't necessarily have to go through a print studio. Print studio does have some of those connections. It can make it easier. But if you have connections with companies, you can sell your prints directly to them. You can license your artwork, which is kind of like renting your artwork to them, uh, to manufacturers. You can, uh, they would choose artwork that you've created to put on their products. And then you get a percentage of their sales um, for that product. You could do freelance work for hire, which is like, when a company reaches out and has something very specific they want you to design for their product and you design it and you're just sort of behind the scenes and you're getting paid directly for your work. You could take personal commissions. So if you're a little bit more of an illustrator or a fine artist, um, you might have people coming to you where they want pet portraits or people portraits, or they want a certain type of art for their home, wall art, something, you know, a painting, a landscape, um, uh, or personal commissions. If you're like a wedding stationary designer, maybe you're doing greeting card design or stationary design specifically for someone's wedding. So someone uh, could, for their own use, um, could commission you to do some artwork. That's right. There's even more options. That was just the beginning. Let me give you some more. Are you overwhelmed yet? <laughs> 
you could create and sell product via Etsy or Shopify. So that could be either handmade or drop shipped. You could get an order for a greeting card, print it out in your own home, fold it in your own home, package it in your own home and sell, uh, you know, mail it out. doesn't have to be in your own home, I guess, if you have office space, but you know, you do all the work or with drop shipping, you partner with someone who manufactures, you know, mugs and I don't know, what are people doing these days? Fanny packs? Is that a thing? <laughs> whatever people are selling, I guess, enamel pins or keychains or whatever. And when you get an order, you contact your drop shipping company. Usually, hopefully the software kind of does it for you. You don't have to do it individually. Um, and they take your art, print it on their product and send that product out to your customer. You could teach workshops or classes. So if you are a watercolor artist or a printmaker or um, are really talented at Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, you can be teaching those skill sets. You can do it live in person or you can do it online. You could do affiliate marketing. So some really talented artists who have big followings get approached by art supply companies or um, you know, brush, like procreate brush companies or whatever in order to talk about the art supplies that they use. And then they get a little bit of a cut when, if their followers end up buying those art supplies, similar for courses. If you've taken a course that you really, really love and you tell everyone about it, if someone, if you're an affiliate and they purchase a course through your link, they are getting a portion of that sales price. If you want to write a book, if you could write a book or illustrate a book, you could get book royalties. Um, you could get YouTube ad revenue if you do tutorials on YouTube and you do, you're prolific and you run ads. Um, you could sell digital products. So Procreate brushes, Illustrator brushes, palettes. You could create fonts. You could make guides or templates for various things. So. Anything that is digital that can be uploaded and then it could be clip art even and that people can then download um, that all counts as selling digital products. <sighs> okay, so are you overwhelmed? <laughs> The artwork on the left is based on a uh, situation I had when I was uh, working with this financial planner who I no longer work with, thankfully. Um, and I got some forms from him and it marked me as unemployed um, and my partner as employed because my partner partner works in an office and I am self-employed. Um, and that made me super mad because I am not unemployed. I am overemployed. <laughs> as you can see, anyone who is attacking all these multiple streams of income is overemployed. They're doing a lot, a lot of work. I don't have one business at this point. I feel like I have three businesses. Um, so if you are looking at these lists and you are wildly overwhelmed, I understand. I understand. So let's, let's talk about this. Here is a little bit of a reality check. Each and everything on that list, which was, uh, I don't know, 16, 17 things, each and every one of those are their own business. There are people out there who are making 80% of their income, 100% of their income on just that source solely, right? So people who are making money all from Spoonflower, people who are getting their whole income from licensing, people who only freelance, people who uh, write art books all the time and get most of their money from art book royalties, right? There is someone uh, doing each and every one of those things as their own business. So we see webinars and, you know, we see blog posts and we see YouTube videos where someone says, you know, here's how I made $100,000 on Discord making sun catchers. And we're like, oh my God, I'm going to make sun catchers and I'm going to make $100,000 and like, let me book my vacation. Step away from the sun catchers. <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to say is, 
All of these things are their own effort. So I wanted to show you, I just Googled how to improve your Etsy sales. Easy tips, connect your shop with social media. Use the trick of engaging social media with coupon codes. Opt for a discount on Etsy for the abandoned shopping carts, AKA figure out abandoned shopping carts and figure out how to email them. Keep changing the Etsy tags. Practice better SEO, focus on blogging. All right, this is just the first thing that comes up. 17 ways to skyrocket your Etsy sales, 17 less familiar Etsy tips, 12 ways to increase your sales, step-by-step -step formula, five things you can actually do to increase your Etsy sales, 10 ways to grow. Are you, are you getting my point here? <laughs> are you seeing where I'm going with this? In order to build an Etsy shop that is successful, that makes you a lot of money, you could spend all day every day working towards that goal, creating the artwork, focusing your SEO, writing blog posts, whatever all these things, all these suggestions are, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is what you focus on grows. You cannot, you cannot launch all these simultaneously. You just can't. You can't launch six businesses, eight businesses at once. Stop trying. I'm giving you permission right now, despite all the advice you've heard about multiple streams of income, I'm giving you permission to stop trying to have multiple streams of income all at once. So what can you do? All right. What can you do? I understand. I have been here because, you know, 10 years ago when I launched my business, my skill set was artwork. Okay. I could design, I could do surface pattern design. I could illustrate. That was my skill set. I didn't want to get a part-time job working at Starbucks, which I could have done. If, if, if it came to that, I was willing to do that. You know, If I needed to get a, a part-time retail job to make it work, I was 100% willing to do that. But I was looking for ways to make money with my personal skill set. And my personal skill set, as I just said, was designing, art, illustration, all that stuff. So. I was not above shiny object syndrome. I would see these webinars and, and blog posts about making so much money on Etsy. Did I have an Etsy shop? Yes. Did I have a Society6 shop? Yes. Did I have a spoon flower? Not really, but, <laughs> but I, I was interested and I was like scheming on it, you know? And, and here's what my advice is now, looking back, seeing what's worked for me, seeing what works for other people. Here's my advice. Pick two when you're getting started. You know, I mean, you could pick one. If you want to put 100% of your weight into one thing, I get it. But two maximum. Pick two things that complement each other and give it a year. Because remember, what you focus on grows. I did freelance and licensing and it worked, it complemented each other perfectly. Those were the two things that I started with. I wanted 50% of my business to be licensing and 50% to be freelance. So while I was looking for free, I had an agent, so that helps, I understand, but you can, you, even if you don't have an agent, it's okay. The point would be that I was looking for freelance work and clients and doing some freelance work, but I didn't have a full client load. If I had a full client load of freelance work, then I, I would have a full-time income and I wouldn't be like worried about it, but I didn't. So in the times that I didn't have work or wasn't specifically looking for new clients, I worked on my licensing portfolio, right? I created new art. So I was able to, and because I had a our, um, an, uh, licensing agent, I was able to sort of pass off the pitching for licensing to that agent. So I was able to pick two things that complemented each other because I was going back and forth between pitching myself and all the business stuff, um, of running a freelance business and the like more uh, less, less structured, way of creating art, not to a creative brief from a freelance client, but being able to design whatever I like to do and just build up my portfolio and put my head down and work on the art for my licensing portfolio. So those two things kind of complemented each other. I was able to work hard on business, work hard on art, do art for my business, for my freelance, um, you know, and, and leave some of, some of the business stuff up to my agent. 
So how can you choose what you should do for your two two things to focus on? I get it. There's I just give you seven million options. That's really tricky. Um, here's what I'm here's a suggestion for you. You could go with the sort of gatekeeper and non gatekeeper approach. So you could pair two things that go well together, but you can work on one with a little bit less frustration than the other. One could be about what's where you're trying to break in, like if you're trying to get a book deal or if you're trying to get a licensing agent. Um, and one could be more focused on creating the art, right? So sort of how I did with the licensing, because I already had an agent, I was more about creating the art. Um, something like Spoonflower or Redbubble, at first, it is a lot about creating the art. Um, yes, obviously there's ways to optimize. And if I had Googled, you know, ways to make your spoon flower shop work, that would be a huge list of things. 17 tips, 14 tips, I'm sure. But, you know, you can start with, you have to start with building up your art for those things. So consistency is really the only way to build things um, and continually learning and optimizing. So consistently creating that artwork for your spoon flower shop or for your licensing portfolio or for your pitch deck for freelance um, versus also going back and forth between two things and you know taking personal commissions uh, if you already have some something like that a little bit established um, being able to being able to go back and forth between two different things so again, with sort of the Etsy shop example, there are always ways that you can optimize and and move forward. But it starts with building the consistent, consistent art, consistent listings and all that stuff. So with freelance, I tried a million things to get traction um, and you can I'm giving a workshop called Ready for Surface Pattern Clients in May that you should totally sign up for. I'll put the link down below um, where I tell you some of my successful techniques. Some of them weren't so successful, but the successful ones I talk about in this free workshop. So definitely sign up for that. Um, I tried a million things, but slowly it started to build up. With licensing, I worked really hard on building that big portfolio. Um, now I have like 100 collections. Um, you know, and I was even trying to market myself alongside my agent for a while. Uh, meaning like, I mean, if you have an agent, it's a partnership. You, you have to do some amount of marketing, but you know, I was even pitching myself when my agent was also pitching myself because I was like, let's move forward. Let's move forward. So the point of that is that there's always more you can do, but staying consistent and not trying to start 14 businesses is the best thing you can do for yourself. Give yourself some grace. Understand that no one, no one is successful at doing all those things. Now that I have a uh, base level of freelance work and licensing work, I started to go, go into teaching, started to do teaching, building up teaching, and that's still something that I that I'm building up, right? I don't have an enormous audience. I don't have, um, you know, 2000 students every year coming in. Um, so it's something I'm building up. Am I going to now start to write a book? Probably not. No, not right now. I want to keep building and then you can add. So people who have multiple streams of income tend to either be making very little on most of those streams, or if they are making good money on those streams, they've built up a couple first, and then they've added in and added in and layered things in. You can't start six businesses at once. So give yourself grace, pick two things, give it a year, what you focus on grows. I hope that helps clear up some of your questions about multiple streams of income for illustrators and surface pattern designers. And I am so excited to see what streams of income you are into. Let me know in the comments. Tell me what you've been finding success with. Tell us about your $100,000 sun catcher experiment that we all are going to be jealous of and probably six other people will try to replicate. In the description of all my YouTube videos, I have a link to elizabethsilver.com slash fresh, which will take you to sign up for my surface pattern boss toolkit. Once you sign up, you'll get an email to confirm and then you'll get the password to get into this toolkit where you can find all kinds of resources, surface pattern, job guide, business advice, all kinds of trend reports, plus bonus videos and access to the archives for my newsletters where I have all kinds of cool links and useful creative business advice that you can check out. 
So I hope you go down to the link and join me. I'd love to have you. And while you're at it, hit subscribe and check out more videos on my channel.